In structural analysis, stiffness is the most important aspect for an engineer. It ensures the structural stability. Stiffness of solid materials is arisen from the intermolecular attraction, which enables the body to resist its own deformation upon loading. Moreover, when such loading is removed, the solid may restore back to original shape. Modulus of elasticity quantifies such material's response using two metrics, stress and strength. While the material is far from building, the relationship between stress due to loading and strength due to deformation is considered linear. The steeper the slope of that linear correlation, the steeper the material. The second factor affecting an object's stiffness is the cross-section. This defines the object's resistance against both bending and excel. Under excel load, structural elements with larger cross-sectional area will exhibit greater resistance. When subjected to bending, elements with greater second moment of area performs better in resisting the rotation of cross-section. An effective way to improve the second moment of area of an element is by increasing its section depth. The third factor influencing member stiffness is length. We know strength is defined as the ratio of deformation to original length of element. The element made of same material subjected to same force will exhibit different degree of deformation if they have different length. In this case, the longer element has low stiffness as it is easily succumbs to the exerted force. The fourth factor affecting an element's stiffness is the support conditions. In structural analysis, element support conditions are generally idealized as roller, pin, and fixed. When a beam is simply supported, the bending moment is not transferred elsewhere and fully sustained by the element. As a result, it shows great deflection. On the other hand, fixed end beam transfers moment due to exerted force to adjacent members and shows lower deflection. Thus, the element with stronger end restraints possesses high stiffness. Based on all four stiffness manipulating factors, empirical formulas for member stiffness are available for different restraint conditions. Given the stiffness of an element, we can calculate the force required to deform it by certain magnitude based on Hooke's law. This law is applicable for us as we always allow the structure to work under elastic region. In a dynamic system, stiffness component is contributed by structural elements that deform when resisting external force. These elements may be arranged to form a series or parallel system. In a series system, stiffness providing elements are connected to each other. A mass component is not attached to all those elements. Under this condition, same amount of force is transmitted through all elements. Deformation of the entire system is the sum of deformation of all elements. In parallel system, mass component is attached to all elements and none of those elements are interconnected. As a result, each element carries a share of exerted force. The deformation of the system equals to the deformation of individual elements. Let's look into this example where a structure is loaded laterally. Under this condition, the columns will be deflected while the floor elements remain a rigid body. Thus, the stiffness of structure is provided by these columns. All of these columns are supporting the floor. All of them is expected to share the same amount of force and exhibit same deflection. Therefore, these columns are in parallel system. Based on the restraint condition of column, we can determine the individual stiffness. By knowing the individual stiffness, we can then determine the stiffness component contributed by all column elements. Thank you for watching. If you find this video helpful, please share it with your friends. We will see you guys soon. Goodbye.